we're gonna start some in the 20 mil. Yep. And then, uh, and then 15, 10, 12 and a half, and then five, and then it gets smaller and smaller. Vern Kyle here. The quality of the audio on this video is not great because of the wind, so I'm just gonna do a voiceover. Today we're dumping 20 mil gravel on this lane and the clay base has been stabilized. Right now, I would like to talk about how Teresa is using her measuring wheel and paint gun to mark out the proper distance that these trucks should dump to get the proper quantity of gravel. This procedure works really well. And the only alternative is to either guess the 200 millimeters of gravel or else have a grade crew check it after each dump. Over the years, I have tried guessing the quantity with the grader and it works okay, but I might guess 180 millimeters in one spot and, and maybe 220 at the next spot. This procedure works a lot better. This lane has an inverted crown and it does have one CB in it. It's about down where the cab of the truck is right now. I will place this gravel completely flat and level and four centimeters above final grade of the invert. Check out a video that I made a couple of years ago titled Invert Crown in Lanes plus V-blades. The lane is 4.6 meters wide and 200 millimeters thick. And Teresa knows that it will take 2.2 tons of gravel per lineal meter. The truck that just left is called an end dump and it will haul about 30 tons. So Teresa will measure with her wheel and put that line at 13 meters. Now there is quad trailers also hauling in this round and they will haul about 36 tons. So Teresa will measure out 16 meters in that case and draw her white line. If the trucker dumps short or dumps past the line, it's no big deal. You can just adjust it a little bit with the grader. When you're taking their weight ticket, you can ask them to stop dumping at that white line. And they seem to like that because it gives them a little bit of a challenge. I'm going to change topics for a little while because I see uh, the tester has showed up. They are an independent company called J.R. Payne Consulting. Standard General has their own lab and their own quality control. But of course, testing on the job site needs to be done by a company that has no affiliation with Standard General. It's important to have a good rapport with these guys because they do have the authority to fail tests and slow down production. Right now, he's telling Teresa that the street over there needs a little more water before it'll pass the density test. Teresa didn't want to give it too much because they're calling for rain. And he's wondering what Teresa is hiding in her pocket. About every 500 tons of gravel, or 15 truckloads, these guys will come and uh, fill up a bag of gravel. It's a sample that they take back to their lab and analyze it. When you're operating grader, it's something you have to watch out for because every couple hours or so, they'll come right in where you're working because uh, they need to pick up this sample, you see. If you're operating the grader and they come for a sample, you might have to gouge your blade in to the compacted material and uh, create a little windrow for them so they can uh, pick up a sample and uh, fill up their bag with a good representation of the material. When this guy gets back to the lab, 
the first thing he'll do with a measured portion is weigh it. Then the next thing he'll do with that measured portion is cook it and dry it right down to 0% moisture. Then he will weigh it again. And by doing that, he'll be able to determine the percentage of moisture in that sample. Then he'll do a sieve analysis, which is basically sifting the gravel through a series of very precise screens. This is 20 mil gravel, so the first screen will have 20 millimeter holes in it. The next screen will be 15 millimeter, then 12 and a half mil, then 10 mil, then 5 mil, then 3 mil, 2 mil, and 1 mil, a series of eight screens. Every size of gravel is weighed and then plotted on a chart. And by doing that, they can determine whether the gravel meets specifications. They also check the fracture by counting how many round rocks are in the sample versus rocks with square edges. The optimum moisture in this gravel is about 7%. His sample gravel is probably only about 3 or 4%, so we obviously need to add water. The quantity of water can be a tricky thing. I mentioned that the optimum moisture in this gravel is about 7% in order to pass the density test. But you know, if the percentage of water goes up to like even about 8%, if it's just 1% over or 2% over, the gravel will just fall apart. It'll act like a mattress. Every time you drive over it, there'll be deflection. You'll see it with the grater, you'll see it with the packers. But if you just dry that gravel back down to about 7%, it'll harden right up again. Again, spongy gravel or gravel that's deflecting under your tires may only be 1% or 2% over optimum. Now, here's something that I've come to realize over the years. If you've got a, some gravel where the water is inconsistent, where there's wet spots and dry spots, if you've got the time, you can just leave it, and within a day or so, the water will naturally even out. It'll migrate through the gravel because the gravel is porous, you see. A general rule with material is, the smaller the particle size, the higher optimum number. The clay that my grater is parked on right now may have an optimum moisture of 20% or even higher. And very fine particle clay can have an optimum moisture of even 40% in order to get optimum density. Water will not permeate through that type of material once it's compacted. So they like to use it for things like levees. Thank you for watching. See you next time.